Luis Alvarez, the CEO of Alvarez Technology Group, is back. And it says here on my screen that whether it's selling cool gadgets on infomercials or launching the next breakthrough technology, the wealth from these successful ventures is starting to aggregate at the top. Is that right, Luis? Uh, you are absolutely right. And by the way, hello. Hi. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hi. I'm going, what What does this say? I'm reading my screen and I go, what? The wealth is aggregating at the top. What is he talking about? Well, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, that's what seems to be happening. As the economy has recovered from the Great Recession, things have gotten better financially for most people, although there's been a lot of flack about the fact that the recovery benefited the top layers of the income earners more than at those at the bottom. The, most da- the more dangerous trend, though, is that income inequality has been accelerating faster since 2007, and it's alarming a lot of people who see that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Well, the evidence is, is in, and this isn't just perception. I mean, it's it's empirical fact. The rich mm-hmm. are getting richer, and the number of people who have fallen below the poverty line is uh, actually picking up steam, as you say, since 2007. So uh, not everyone's as fortunate as A.J. Kumani. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's true. And while I do understand the concern about the growing gap, I think we, we may be ignoring history a little bit because mm-hmm. – after every great economic downturn, you know, going back through the history of our country, you always have this huge shakeout of employment. And a lot of the jobs that existed before the economic collapse just disappear forever after that. Mm-hmm. That's true. And the, the fact is, economic setbacks like the Great Recession are an unfortunate but necessary evil of a capitalistic society. It's these downturns that force companies to innovate, improvise, and and trim costs in order to survive. And this is how economic revolutions are started, and technology has always benefited from these kind of upheavals. Well, that's hard to argue with. Yeah, you know, the naysayers who are worried about the growing income inequality also ignore the fact that since 2007, we've added millions of people to the ranks of millionaires in this country. And do you know where most of those millionaires are being minted? Um, I, I, I don't. You mean there's a concentration somewhere. I, I really don't know where that would be. It's California. And any guess really? why? No, I, I don't. Well, if you say the Silicon Valley is located there, you'd be dead right. The, the fact is that technology startups have become millionaire-making factories and not just at the very top. Yeah, you know, okay, when you look at Facebook, for example, you see a, a billionaire like Mark Zuckerberg, but you miss out on the thousands of people who are now millionaires because they worked at Facebook. And, and this includes a lot of non-technical people like HR directors and maintenance managers. And that's because the way a lot of these startups work is that they invest everyone who works there in the success of the company by giving them very generous stock options as either additional incentive or in the case of some of the most senior and talented executives just in lieu of salary itself. So give us an example of someone like that. Well, take the former uh, chief technology officer at Facebook. When the company went public, he owned options that amounted to less than one-tenth of one percent of the total amount of shares outstanding, yet he was still worth tens of millions of dollars, enough so that he was not only able to improve his lifestyle, as you would expect, but you know he was able to be generous and donate several million dollars to charitable causes that he supported. You know, suddenly finding yourself rich when the company you work for goes public or gets acquired by a larger company for a ton of money also gives you a lot of freedom. Many of these young, enterprising, newly minted millionaires leave the company that they work for. And, uh, you know, when they got rich and they start their own new businesses, which continues to perpetuate and expand the cycle of, of you know, new, young, wealthy people. Right. And also new businesses. I, I know mm-hmm. that a lot of people, the reason that they are trying to become millionaires is because they have dreams and ideas and inventions of their own that they uh, that they want to go pursue. And, and this allows them to create their own uh, source of capital to do that. So um, do you feel that if uh, enough millionaires are, are created in a place like Silicon Valley, that that the gap in uh, in income between the poor and the wealthy is is maybe the price to make more of these millionaires? Uh, Well, you know, call me an optimist, but when I see what's going on in technology hubs like Silicon Valley, I get very excited. I mean, here's where the future rich are going to come from. Uh, Unfortunately, though, for for many people who lost those jobs um, 
before you know the economy turned around, those jobs will never come back. And the world changes, and and we all have to adapt with it. For some people, getting new skills is is hard, if not impossible. But for many, it really represents an opportunity. And you know, I can tell you from personal experience, we do not have enough IT savvy people available in this country. We str- we personally, our company struggles to find qualified talent every day, and millions of tech jobs around the country go unfilled because we do have a big skills gap. Yet again, something that you'd expect after an economic shock that upends the status quo. So those who are being left behind and are falling below the poverty line are are actually people who don't have the skills to survive this new world. Is that the bottom line? Is it either adapt new skills or, or fall off the radar? Yeah, I mean, the the days I, I you know I remember growing up that um, getting a high school education guaranteed you a certain level of of, of um, you know economic success. You mm-hmm. didn't have to go to college, and you didn't have to get a you know a, a postgraduate degree. As you know, a, a simple high school diploma g- gave you the skills that you could go out and get a, a decent job. Well, sure. those days are over. You know, that's uh, you need to have a very um, you know, you need to have certain skills that the new economy demands, and the high school education isn't enough. You need to, to go on to, to other forms of learning, or the education system is going to have to adapt, and we've talked about that in the past a few times. I know, but I'm even hearing that a college degree isn't sufficient. Uh, I just heard a statistic that uh, HR managers would rather hire someone without a college degree that has uh, on-the-job experience than hire mm-hmm. someone who has a college degree from a for-profit college institution, let's say like an online college degree uh, pr- uh, institution. Yeah, and that, and that you point out something that, that really is um, is a unique new trend, and that is that a lot of people, young people, are looking for internship opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, they they want to get that experience because they know, like you pointed out, just getting the degree isn't enough. You have to have that practical, weir- real world, you know, been there, done that. Um, experience that comes with working in a company. Um, so you're seeing this uh, big uptick in, um, you know, paid internships as well as uh, volunteer internships because some people know that they just have to get out there and, you know, get that on their resume so that they can get a job when they're ready to, to join the workforce. So how does this affect you as a small business owner? Because you own your own technology firm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to make, I mean, the smaller the company, the more accurate your uh, picks have to be in turn, in terms of talent acquisition. Uh, and you're competing with some very large companies up in Silicon Valley who can offer yep. juicy compensation packages and stock options. So um, h- how does this affect your business? Well, you know, all of those things just depress me, by the way. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, every week you come on and depress me about some technology that I'm not going to possibly be able to learn or adapt fast enough on. So let me, let me return the favor here. <laughs> Well, we really strive to be different, and we also strive to grow our own. You know, hire smart kids, uh, of course, hire slow, mm-hmm. fire fast, uh, but hire smart people who we know we can train or, or we can train um, to get to our standards. So uh, sometimes it's, 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 a, it's a little longer in the process to get them up to speed, but it works out for us. I can see. So you like to grow your own talent. Well, uh, that is a, you know, those those are wise words for small business. And I think we're, as a small business that I'm running right now, I have to say we're doing the same thing. We're pulling people out of colleges and then giving them that that on-the-job experience and growing them as we as we go. I'm afraid we have to take a break, but it's nice to know that there are new millionaires being created every day in Silicon Valley and also mm-hmm. the lucky ones who get to uh, showcase their products on uh, as seen on TV. But at some point, society is going to have to deal with those left behind. Thanks for coming on the program, Lewis. It is my pleasure, Rebecca. This is Lewis Alvarez from the Alvarez Technology Group reminding you that when it comes to technology, forewarned is forearmed.